You're listening to She's the Business Podcast. Can you start an online business if you have no marketing experience at all? Well, my guest today has done just that. So stay tuned to listen to her story of how she got started in business while working a full-time job and with zero marketing experience to bring to the table. Hi, I'm your host, Jessica Osborne, and in my 23 years of business and marketing, I've built many brands to become multi-billion dollar companies. And just in the last 10 years, I've built two online businesses of my own from my dining room table with two little babies running around at my feet. I've made it my mission to inspire you to get out of your own way and become the successful business owner who's living the lifestyle you really desire without all the hustle. This is She's the Business podcast made by women for women. This is your weekly dose of motivation and inspiration. I'm really excited today to bring you an interview with Anthea Tolan, who is one of the members of my group coaching program, The Momentum Club. Anthea has been a member for the last couple of years, um, and she joined right back at the beginning of her business journey, when her idea was not much more than a concept. And we fast forward through to today, where she has built her own website pretty much single-handedly. She has a Facebook group that she runs. She has Facebook page, social media, and she has done this all while working a full-time job. And she had zero marketing experience at all when she started. So the entire thing has been a huge learning curve for her. And she's sharing with us today you know, a lot of her own insights into this journey and what she's learnt, um, what she would advice she would give herself if she went back in time. Um, And there's so many little nuggets of gold in this interview. So without further ado, let me play it for you. Hi, Anthea. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm really excited to um, have a chat with you about your story, your journey into business, which I think will definitely feel familiar for a lot of um, our listeners. So thank you for joining me. Thanks very much, Jess. It's lovely to be here. Yes, excellent. So just for the um, everybody listening, do you want to give us the two-minute um, overview of who you are and what your business is all about? So um, I run the business. I'm the owner of Great Ocean Road Living. And what it does is it helps business um, owners along the Great Ocean Road in Victoria um, get known by locals holiday homeowners and visitors. It's an online platform. So um, yeah, opportunity for them to showcase their business and really increase uh, their customer base online mm. through, an, through an online platform, yes. Yes. And so what? Um, how did you come up with this concept? You know, what were the challenges that you saw happening in the Great Ocean Road area? Well, what happened is that uh, my husband and I, we bought a holiday home down in Torquay, which is the gateway to the Great Ocean Road. And um, we, at that stage, we were living in Melbourne and, and going down there frequently. And then we decided where well, we would manage it as an Airbnb property. So that was all fine. We got that going. And then all of a sudden, we were based in Melbourne and we needed services down at our, at our property. So, for example, we needed somebody to fix the air conditioning or somebody to mow the lawn. And suddenly I realized that I didn't have access to these people. um, And where could I find these people? So I started searching, searching on the Internet, um, the equivalent of the yellow pages. And I realized that there wasn't really a a one stop shop of of locals, local business operators, uh, many of who were service providers who could actually offer those options to me as a holiday home owner. And also the other aspect was is that I wasn't always there. I needed trusted, recommended people who were going to come into my property, uh, offer the service, and then leave. And I wasn't available to open them or open the home or welcome them through. So it sort of opened up a whole uh, Pandora's box of, of who was out there, how could I get something that I wanted quickly? Because with Airbnb, it has to be quick. You've got a visit, you've got another guest yeah. coming in in 24 hours. Mm. Um, so So that's how I thought uh, we needed a a place somewhere online where people could register their businesses because at the end of the day, we all want to support local. And I wanted to support those locals in the areas. Mm. But at that stage, I didn't know who they were. 
So that's why I built this platform. Yeah, um, to connect with these people. Mm. I think that is the challenge with some of these um, you know, more generic platforms is that you get ads on there for businesses that aren't local. And so, you know, you might be searching to find them, yes. find somebody and not finding someone who's local to you. And it's so frustrating. And I, I guess as well in that area, you might have local businesses who have been reliant just on the 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 network and like people knowing who they are and the foot traffic so to speak um yes. in that area that they potentially hadn't even got their business online yet so um you know so much opportunity I think for a win for everybody you know win for definitely and, and win for people like yourself who who have a need to find people in the, in the local area Definitely. You know, the whole of the surf coast, which is right across through to Warrnambool, is a huge growth area. Um, mm -hmm. Many people can't afford to live in Melbourne, so they're all moving to that area and then commuting to Melbourne. And yes. Many of them are setting up their own businesses in that area, but they don't know how to market it. Um, they also don't know how to find other locals who can offer them services. Um, so, yeah, they need to... It, well, this is another opportunity is to get online so that, um, as I said, that locals can find locals. Yeah. Um, the, the other interesting thing is it's a very creative space. I mean, a lot of creative people are moving down there, artists, sculptors. Right. Um, it's, mm. it's, it's incredible. And they've got sort of arts trails and that. So that's a huge movement. So I want to all capture all of those businesses as well, uh, where people are starting from the beginning and they need to be yeah. found. Yeah. yeah, and I can imagine that in the last year or so, there's just been even more of an influx of people moving yeah. out of Melbourne down to the, the coast just to get away from the city. So absolutely a service like this, um, I can imagine so needed when, you know, you've got a small business and maybe you have moved out of where mm -hmm. you had been locally and now you're wanting to run it, you know, on the Great Ocean Road area. Um, you know, how do you reach your customers? And obviously online is is the one place where you can be found. But mm. like you say, that um, comes with its challenges because you go and set up your own website, well, then you, you're battling for space in the search engine with all of the other <laughs> small business websites oh, yes. as well. So you might end up on page 10 and, and nobody finding you. Um, you know, and that's, I guess, the real reason why they would come to you and, and list with Great Ocean Road Living is... Um, that they, you can get the visibility that they, they wouldn't be able to get on their own? Well, I mean, our whole focus is online. So SEO, search engine optimization, is a huge focus for us on that so that we do get found. Um, yeah. People are putting in a, in a search term. We do get found. I mean, that is a big part of our business. And many smaller business operators don't often have the time to do that. Yes. So what we're saying is join us. Have your own website, join us. But that is the big part of our role in this. Yeah. And that's where they can get a lot of value because we are promoting them through the whole uh, website. Yeah, such a great concept. So you um, actually have a corporate job and, and you still yes. work at as well. Um, do you want to tell us a bit about your background and how you came to be an online entrepreneur? Um, so I've always worked, um, as, as you've mentioned, in the corporate world, but I've basically been focusing my attention in logistics and supply chain um, on the administration side in those areas. Um, but I've always been looking for an outlet. I, I do think that going online is certainly the way to go these days. Um, I mean, it's, it's so much more affordable for small business to be seen yeah. um, and to be found online. So certainly it's always been an interest of mine. I also yeah. love uh, data and analytics and, and systems and how uh -huh. they set up and how they interact. So um, setting up this business uh, was started as a hobby and then it's become much more than that since I've progressed. Yes, that's um, great. Yes, yeah, so certainly it's, it's had its, it's, has its challenges. Um, I mean, I'm full-time full -term working. Yeah. Um, and during lockdown, you know, you're on a screen all day. <laughs> and it's very, it's very intensive, um, yeah. as most people know, when you're working from home, extremely intensive. So yeah. you have to find find ways where you can uh, work on the weekends or work early mornings or in the evenings where you can just keep things going. So there's no doubt that I'm not working as fast as I'd love to, but you have to put into context 
uh, running a family, running a home, <laughs> yeah. all the things that go with that. Uh, and then you've got work and then, and then you've got this, this other big part of your life, uh, mm. which, is, which is so enjoyable. Yeah. So what were your, um, I guess, biggest maybe fears or limiting beliefs that you had that you had to overcome to even get started in this new business life as an online entrepreneur? <laughs> Um, well, I, I was coming at it uh, from the beginning, really from zero knowledge of what it was like to run a business online. Um, the technology was huge for me, getting my head around all the different aspects because there are so many different moving mm. parts. Um, but the other aspect that um, I did not have a, knowledge, a lot of knowledge on was the marketing side. I've never been involved in marketing. I've always left the marketers to their own devices at, at the office. And I was yep. always focused on the logistics and the supply chain. And for me, that's been a, a very steep learning curve is the marketing. And, and that was really one of the reasons why I came through to you, Jess, because you have that wealth of marketing knowledge. And I knew that I needed to learn right from the beginning. And I think that's been so helpful to me, knowing that you were there and that I could bounce ideas, something that I thought was so reasonable, uh, you would say, well, have you thought about it this way? And I said, oh, actually, no, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a big learning. It has been and still continues to be a, a big learning curve. Mm. Mm. Well, I think marketing is something, I mean, I've been now 23 odd years and counting. Um, I'm still learning every day, every week, <laughs> and will continue to. So, you know, don't, don't feel like that's um, anything bad at all. It's it's just part of it. I think you know when we're dealing with marketing, you're dealing with people, and people are, you know, we're not we're, we're complex beings, <laughs> and mm. so there's always something more to learn and something that you can improve, um, no matter what level you've got to. You know, I, I think there wouldn't be a single business out there who would say yes my marketing is 100% nailed and I couldn't possibly improve it anymore. Like I, <laughs> no. I doubt anyone could even say that. Yes. Um, so, no, I think I, um, with business, you know, you're coming in any business, as soon as you become a, you found a, a start a business, you know, become a founder of a business, you are suddenly putting on a hat of a marketer. Um, no matter what the business is, um, to get clients, you know, there is marketing that happens and, and whether or not you're doing it intentionally or or just, you know, less intentionally, um, you still have marketing that needs to be done. Um, and then your business is you're actually helping other people market their business. So yes. you know, that was a huge leap for you to take, which I, I really, I think is so, is fantastic. You know, really, really brave of you to to do that and to step right out of your comfort zone um so like, yeah as I said it has been a, a huge learning curve and but I think the other thing that you've helped me so much with is is that, that you need to provide consistency of the messaging throughout I mean I've got the website and then I've also obviously gone to do a the face Facebook Instagram I've got a Facebook group so it's really getting that consistency of messaging throughout all those areas and um you know you, you forget that i mean i normally just hit one and then off i go but in after fact you, you've got to look through at that follow through right the way across yes and, uh, that's been very useful yes that's that's right and um you know there's so many lesser known things i suppose like you know a chat that we were just having earlier and thinking well you, you know you, you might tell your audience something but you're telling it to them once and thinking well i've told them now and and mm -hmm. they'll know that and forgetting that you know i guess when people we're so busy our lives are so crazily busy yes. even if they saw that once and thought that's a good idea they may not have acted on it like we need to be reminding them and i think that that's a um, definitely less obvious part of marketing that a lot of people feel, oh, if I say things more than once, I'm being spammy or I'm being pushy or I'm being salesy or any of these um, beliefs that we have around marketing. But, you know, I, I really believe in looking at it like you're actually just communicating, you're informing them. And by providing another piece of communication as a reminder, you're giving them that opportunity to see it again and, and act on it when they may have yeah. forgotten about it. They might've missed it the first time. Um, you know, what we see in our own business is not always what everybody else sees because yes. 
they've got their own things going on you know they're, they're really focused on their own business and their own life so um you know it, it's certainly not being pushy to you know to get the message out and to communicate it um more than once yes. Um, yes. which is definitely yeah just this really simple thing to to think about and, and the same goes with you know whether you're doing email campaigns or anything that you need people to to get the message and to understand yes. you know you think we we almost need to think about over communicating it um from our perspective we'll feel like we're saying the same thing over and over again but for our audience they might only be getting a little portion of that so um absolutely Mm. Absolutely. The other fear that I, I did have was that I was going into such a crowded market. And wow. I know you've you've mentioned this before, um, you know, and, and I think that, that being in the service industry, it's just so competitive. Yes. And you really have to find something which shows that you are slightly different um, and, and that your value that you're providing is, is worth it for them to, you know, to come on board. Mm -hmm. And so that was another another message that you did uh, sort of, you know, talk to me about a number of times and that you just have to do it your way. It has to be nobody can do it the same way that you can do it. Yeah. Um, and I think you've mentioned that several times because it can be daunting when you go into this and you think, oh, I've got a great idea. It should be fine. But in actual fact, you realize other people are doing there's so many other people doing similar things. So how mm -hmm. are you going to stand out from the crowd? Yes. So, um, yeah, that's exactly right. You know, it's, there's there's so many different ways that you can make money and you can, you know, you can sell anything if you want to, but it's a lot easier when you just take that time to uncover what it is, what your space is, what is your unique value, how are you different to the others out there so that you're actually really clear on who it is, who you're trying to attract and why. Um, rather than just be like, I just want any client, <laughs> you know. Yes. Um, and that's, yes. I think, what the majority of people start their business thinking, oh, you know, I just want to make money. So anyone yes. who comes along who's going to pay me, that great, they'll be a good client. Um, and then they wonder why it's really hard to get clients. It's because <laughs> nice. nobody's walking exactly. past thinking that they're just anybody, you know. We all think that we're special when we've got special needs and we're looking for um, that person who is the right fit for us and who has yeah. exactly what we need. Um, and, yeah, there's so much psychology behind it. I think, like you say, we are in, in our subconscious, we're always looking for the reason why it's not for us, you know, why it's not yes. a good fit. Um and if we're not addressing that in our key messaging straight up front, making someone feel like I'm in exactly the right place, this is where I need to be, that is what I want, and, you know, your objections about it are, are sort of handled as well, if we're not doing all of that, it's really hard for someone to take that next step um, yes. because, you know, they're looking for the reasons why not. You know, <laughs> that's what we naturally do. I think it's our instinct um survival instincts that are it's always looking for danger and risk um so that's def definitely something that's really comes about when you are clear and you know you've created that unique space for yourself yes. which clearly you have and you've been building a great facebook group full of your local yes. businesses on the great ocean road so it just shows you that you know once you you start doing that and you have a clear message that you you attract the right people to you. Yes, and you know, yeah, I'm learning as I'm going along and some things work and some things don't work, but that's mm -hmm. okay because that's how I'm, I'm finding out. The other thing that I wanted to say, and I'm sure other people will have found the same, is that when you, you know, we've been in lockdown here in Melbourne for a long time, you know, on and off over the last two years, mm -hmm. and you're very much alone, you know. So all you've got is your PC. So that's why I've enjoyed... Um, you know, making contact with you and the group that you run um, because I know that there are other people there in the same environment that I am. You know, as I said, it can feel very lonely. Um, yes. and, and knowing that there's somebody there who, who you can reach out to, especially when we're all in different stages of our business. Um, you know, some people are well advanced. Some people are just at the beginning. We're all doing different things at different times. Um, <laughs> but that's okay. And just being able to reach out and get support and help, and then you're on again, then you're off again, you know, and you can carry on running. Uh, yes. But I think that that's a big part, a big part of being in lockdown, being in an online business, mm. and really 
um, having to learn so much. And sometimes it can be overwhelming. But um, no, it's been it's been very comforting to be a part of of the group and know yes. that you are there. Yeah. Uh, thank you. I think. Um, yeah, I think a lot of people would, would relate to that. Um, you know, even without lockdown, it can mm. feel lonely starting a business and you can't talk yeah. to your partner about it. They don't really understand. No. And, no. You know, if you've got a dog or a cat at home, like you, you know, <laughs> they, they don't provide much useful <laughs> advice. So who yeah. do you talk to? And um, and I think that one of the real beauties of a group is that sometimes, you know, you might feel you've got a barrier, you're stuck somewhere that, you know, you're really struggling with something. And it's hard to see your own blind spot. It's hard to see what's in front of you that someone else can see clearly. And, you know, I think that that's one of the real things I love the most about being able to help people is that, you know, often it's helping you see the easy way you know we've we've created yeah. a mountain in front of us it feels so high but actually there's a tunnel through the mountain and you can just keep on going and it's just helping you to see that 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 tunnel's there and um there you know you don't have to go and scale Everest to to get there after no. all which no. is really good and um, and um in in South Africa we always say and I'm sure you use it here you know you've got that elephant and you've got to eat that elephant. And how do you eat that elephant? And it's just mouthful by mouthful because, as I said, <laughs> there's so much that's overwhelming with a new business, but you have to start somewhere and you just got to keep, you know, prodding on. Yeah, and, that's uh, right. Yeah. And which bit do you uh, start with? <laughs> well, I Having that up. <laughs> I hope that's partly as well the um, the value of you know, having my group in the program is mm. that you do know where you need to focus on next. And, you know, I'm, yes. I'm really conscious that there is so much information out there and, and we can all get overwhelmed with it. But yes. when you have a sort of a, a pathway of, right, well, I don't need to worry about all that right now because my yes. next step is this. That's all I need to focus on. I'll get that one done. And then, you know, can just the clarity and, and that confidence on what you're doing um, makes much faster progress I think uh, absolutely absolutely yeah. because you're right there's just so much coming at you and mm -hmm. uh yeah I mean I was just uh before the podcast I was just listing myself you know on all the technical sides that I've sort of had to come I can't I can't say I'm uh well into them or uh, I've got a good knowledge of them but I've got a basic knowledge of them and I mean it's you know I've learned Photoshop I've learned Canva you know obviously WordPress um Yoast, yeah. um, my theme within WordPress, you know, SEO. And then through a lot of your um, workshops and that, I've learned how to, um, you know, improve on writing an about us page or how to improve on testimonials and how to ask for testimonials, you know, and, and yeah. getting your email uh, process set up, you know. So there's just so much going on there, but it's each one has its own little focus. But mm. I agree, you don't have to get it all ready all at once, but just to yeah. know where you are at and how you can just keep moving forward. Mm. I think that's, that's the most important thing. Absolutely. And I think you've yeah. been really good at, at that, considering, you know, you're working a full time job. You haven't had all the time in the world to spend on your business, but you've been consistently taking steps forward. You know, you're chipping away and prioritizing what is the next thing and consistently moving forward, which is fantastic. Um, what do you think has been your biggest learning throughout this experience so far? Um, I think the main thing is you just got to keep going forward because when you have limited time and I know that everybody's got limited time but when you have you can't do everything all at once and otherwise you'll just throw in the towel it just gets too hard so yeah. you've really just got to pick pick the main things and just keep mm -hmm. uh, focus on them and then move on so that's definitely something that I've learned and you can't get down about it if you don't you know tick all the boxes you just you just got to keep going um but I've, I've enjoyed it. There are obviously certain aspects that I enjoy more than others. And I've had setbacks within the te technical side as well, where, um, you know, some plugins don't work or you've had to deactivate plugins or whatever it is. Um, but yeah, you just find another way. And I think coming together with the group has given me a lot more confidence to yes. keep going uh, yeah. because confidence is a big part of, of these type of ventures. I, I imagine for everybody. I mean, certainly for me, it is. It's just the confidence to keep going and that you are okay. It's not even going to be 100%, but if you can get 80%, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. it, it, you're hiring. I agree with that so much. You know, I think sometimes we, we tend to focus on, oh, there's this problem 
and it gets bigger than it needed to be because yeah. there's always another way, you know, and potentially more than one other way. Um, it's just yes. about thinking that's okay, all right, that's happened or we can't do it that way. What can we do now, you know, and yes. asking those questions that are a little bit more helpful than thinking, oh, I can't do that, therefore that means that, uh, you know, I can't progress this forward. It's like, well, actually, is that really true? Is there another way I could do this? Or how could yes. I get that outcome? Maybe, I, you know, go down a completely different path to get there, which yes. um, is always the, the possibilities are just endless. I think, you know, when we're yes. in this position, um, the future hasn't been written. We're here today. So what you choose to do, you can decide it. <laughs> yes. And I think the other thing that I've been so pleased about is I've had such a, uh, a a res positive response from the people that have listed on my uh, website. Um, Fantastic. Everybody thinks it's a great idea. And I've had a great response in my Facebook group as well. Um, and I never thought I would get that positive response. I suppose, you know, you go and you're not quite sure. You're going yeah. a bit tentatively. But um, a, a woman recently who's, who's joined my um, website has written a blog for me. And I would never have formed a, a, a connection with her if she hadn't yeah. seen my website and she's written a beautiful blog all about the great ocean road walk that's uh, quite a well-known walk there so I've, I've, I've made those connections and i think it's it's good for everybody you know you learn more about who the locals are and what they're up to yeah that's fantastic yeah. it's so good to hear that because i know from working with you that you you know you did have so many doubts um even after you'd started you know is this really going to work and will people <laughs> want it and will they like it and yeah. And to hear that you have connected with those people and they're, they're loving it, they think mm. it's a great idea, yeah. um, you know, it just goes to show you that, you know, you're glad that you stuck at it, that you're glad you didn't yeah. listen to, to that and, and that you kept going. What would you yeah. say that you're most proud of achieving or, you know, have, have, have done so far? Um, well, I, I suppose I'm proud of the website itself. I mm -hmm. think it's, it looks nice. It's yeah. um, easy to navigate. Um, I finally got my own picture on there, which was a huge thing for me. It's another I suppose, <laughs> stumbling block that I've had to overcome. I put myself more out there. Yes. I think, as I said, in marketing, it hasn't been easy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and um, I've had my children supporting me saying, come on, mom, you know, get, get your photo out there. <laughs> uh, um, the website, it's running pretty well. I've got, um, you know, obviously my blog areas, um, I've got quite a few blogs there, but I need to do more um, as always. But I think connecting it all with the technology has been, I suppose I am quite pleased with that because it's you know yeah. steep learning curve. I did an SEO course last year and it was quite intensive. And I was sort of waking up at six o'clock in the morning and working till eight and then I quickly have a shower, quickly eat my breakfast and then back at my normal work at half past eight till six o'clock in the evening and then back onto this. You know, it was full on for sort of ten weeks. Yes. And um yeah, you realize, yeah, it's it, it yeah. you have to you have to you can't do that all the time it's unsustainable but I could do it for a period of time so mm. but, but at the end of it I've, I've learned so much about SEO so now I'm identifying where I need to fix things on my website and um, it's something that I'm very interested in working uh, focusing on going forward whether I can help other people with their SEO um, as I said I'm very interested in the systems and data and things. yes uh, all those aspects of of websites and and business as such Yes. Uh, um, hopefully, yeah. I'll, I'll be able to move on to those in the future. But yeah, yeah, absolutely. Getting, my, yeah. getting my head around all that terminology and all the acronyms has been quite an interesting <laughs> time. <laughs> yes, and I can see how it really aligns with your, you know, how you've worked in the past and, and yeah, you do from your own skill level. Um, it really would align well with that, and it's great to see you know, you taking on and conquering something like SEO and then implementing it and seeing the results and then thinking, you know, that's actually something that a lot of people don't understand, especially, you know, your your target market with your, mm. your businesses on the Great Ocean Road. I can imagine, you know, for all of them to, to do that themselves um, be quite an undertaking. So, you know, having somebody like you there who can provide that service for them or help them out with that, that would be fantastic and so valuable. Um, well, definitely. I mean, the, the people that I have uh, made connections with down there and that are on my Facebook group, you know, many of them are involved in the tourism industry. Mm. The number of visitors, the number of tourists, this is pre-COVID, 
there are more people that visit the Great Ocean Road than visit the Great Barrier Reef as tourists. Mm -hmm. And I never knew that before myself. But so we've got lots of different interesting businesses. We've got people who are making chocolates um, down there, you know, people who, lots of vineyards, uh, yeah. gin distilleries. You know, there's all these very, <laughs> really fantastic businesses down there, but they're all busy making and producing and yes. uh, catering to the tourism. They don't have time to worry about uh, what's going on with their website or how they're getting, you know, uh, more eyes into, you know, the options and the products that they offer. So I'm hoping that there will be opportunities for me there. Uh, I'm, I'm sure there will be, you know, and I think it's really, you know, I like to say there is no one, you know, people think, oh, the market's too crowded. Well, every market is crowded these days. <laughs> um, you know, the, in the services space, as soon as we're online, you know, it's really opened up that geography so that people can provide services remotely. Um, yes. You know, don't have to be in the same location, but which means that the markets are crowded, but it also means that the opportunity is there. And every yes. business who is online, which is every business, you know, really needs to think about their SEO if they do want to be found. Um, so it just, for me, you know, although the market is crowded, it, there's also so much more opportunity as well. <laughs> you know, it comes, there is the demand and the supply, and it's really more about you and how you decide to, take on that opportunity or look at the opportunity yes. and, and move forward with it as opposed to, you know, worrying about, well, will it work? Won't it work? Well, it will work if you decide that that's what you're going to do. You just get yes. out there and you find who are the customers that you really want to work with and what's that space you want to play because, as we said at the beginning, you know, you, you're not playing in the entire market. You're going to play in your yeah. part of it where you're going to help the people who, who are most aligned to you and, and, and what your exactly. value is, what you're going to bring. Um, yeah. So, you know, you've got so much experience now in, in looking at how you do <laughs> local marketing um, and local SEO on, on your site. So, you know, what a fantastic offering to then have for other local businesses. Mm. Yeah. No. It, it's going to be good. I'm good. I'm looking forward to it. And I think the other thing is, you know, um, people in the group are ahead of me in certain areas, and I'm hearing all about uh, people are offering online courses and people are mm. setting up webinars and you know all these lovely things. And I'm also keen to do. I can't can't do it all at once, but I'm already <laughs> thinking ahead. Ah, you know, I want to go onto there, into that whole area as well. So certainly the opportunities are there. Fantastic. That's so good. Yeah. If you could go back in time and give yourself one piece of advice, um, do you have one thing that it would be? Um, I think that what I would do differently is that I would definitely do more research on my competitors um, mm -hmm. before I started because I think I would have had more of an idea of what I was going into. I sort of went in a bit blindly at the beginning, um, thinking, oh, I'll just you know work it out as I go along, but I could have saved myself a lot of time um yes, okay and it was just the way it happened as I said I started off mm -hmm. small thinking oh I'll see how this goes but um oh, yeah I mean now I know a lot more about my competitors and um, that I do need to differentiate myself from them they tend to be very much council based mm -hmm. and uh Victorian government based because the Victorian government and the council are obviously putting a lot of money into attracting people to come down there for whatever reasons, whether it's to live down there or to visit down there. So yes. a lot of that sort of marketing that they're doing is in direct competition to me. Okay. But I still believe that there's definitely a, a place for me because, um, you know, they've obviously got a lot of other things to worry about as well. For example, the council, you know, they're worrying about oh, yes. rate so, payers and schools and <laughs> a whole yeah. lot of other things that I don't have to worry about. And mm. uh, you know, and I guess as well, time. you know, to think about what is the opportunity for you in this situation, um, you know, if the councils are focusing on bringing people there, that's a good thing for you, you know, where, yes. what's the opportunity for you, how can you leverage that? Um, yes. Because where there's a problem, there's always the other side of that same problem is, is the opportunity. And I think that that's the really beautiful thing about it. Um, yes. That's certainly not going to be a bad thing for your business to bring people there. So, you know, how can you leverage it how could you make the most yes. of it um yes. is certainly what i'd be thinking fantastic yes. so if we have people who are listening now and they happen to be um 
on the Great Ocean Road or thinking about moving out of Melbourne and setting up their business on the Great Ocean Road, I'm sure they'd love to learn a bit more and get in touch with you. So where can they find you? Um, well, that would be really fantastic. Um, they can go to my website, which is greatoceanroadliving.com.au, and they can just make contact with me there. Um, we do have a, a, a special giveaway to founding members of the website, and all they need to do is, is mention that they've listened to this podcast and get in contact with me via the Contact Us page, and I'll certainly uh, look and see what I can do for them. Fantastic. That's yeah. amazing. Thank you so much for that. And I think um, I'll obviously link up your website and your yeah. Facebook page and your group in the show notes um, so that people can come and connect with you on their preferred platform. Um, and yes, as you say, come and check out your website and, yes. and get in touch with you via there. But thank you so much for your time today, mm -hmm. Anthea. I think it's been really insightful discussion. Um, I love hearing about you know, a lot of my clients happen to be marketers and you certainly are <laughs> someone who's not the same as, as them and that you had zero marketing experience. Exactly. Um, but as you can see, that hasn't been a, a barrier to you getting this business right. up and running and to having, you know, the success that you've had already and and we're really just still at the beginning stages. So there's so much more to come in the future. Um, you know, you're really showing that no matter who you are or what you have done in the past, that you can make it work and you can do it. And it's just about keeping one step, the next step, keep going <laughs> and, and obviously reaching out for the support that you need as well because, you know, it's. I think building a business is not something you can do on your own. It's uh, something that you Definitely do. not. Yes. Do together. No. <laughs> thanks so much, Jason. I've really enjoyed chatting today. And, yeah, thanks. As I said uh, and as you've said, yeah, you, you you're not on your own when you're with the group and it's a fantastic feeling. So, yeah, so thanks very much. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Anthea. Thanks a lot, Jess. So if you would like to improve the marketing of your business, then the first place we always start is with your ideal customer avatar. Now, my system for your ideal client is different to most. With my ultimate customer avatar worksheet, there are 35 questions to help you really deep dive into what your ideal client is currently thinking, feeling, and you know what their goals are, what they're doing in their buying behavior. Go to jessicaosborne.com slash customer hyphen avatar to download your free copy of my ultimate customer avatar worksheet today. And let's get started on defining who that ideal client really is.